Good afternoon. This is Pete Burns with the Energy Conservatory. Today's webinar is on the TEC Wi-Fi Link. The Wi-Fi Link is a wireless adapter that allows wireless connectivity and control between any vintage DG700 and either a PC or an iPhone or an iPad. With the Wi-Fi Link, you're not going to need a USB cable, you won't need the old school serial cables, and you're not going to need to worry about how close you have to set your laptop to your blower door fan. With the Wi-Fi link, you can be able to do blower door tests. You'll be able to use the, um, the device to, to do a duct leakage to the exterior test. You're going to be able to control your blower door fan. You'll be able to do diagnostic testing. You can do a CAS test where your iPhone or your iPad become a virtual DG700, allowing you to see the pressure change in the CAS as you walk through the building, creating events. Every time you turn on an exhaust fan or open or close an interior door, you're going to see the change in pressure in your, uh, in your CAS. You can also use the link uh, for multi-fan commercial testing. Currently, we have a, uh, uh, a Wi-Fi version of Tektite for PCs available from the uh, Energy Conservatory website. Free download 24-7. We're working on a... Um, a Wi-Fi version of TechLog. TechLog 3 uh, is a data logging software that allows the control and recording of flows and pressures of multiple fans, but it is still in development. We should have that out very, very soon. Uh, we also have a, a, an Apple software called iTech 700. The, um, the Wi-Fi device has two connection modes. The first one that it ships in, uh, when you get it, it's going to be in what's called AP, which stands for Access Point, Direct Connect Mode. In this mode, the, the Wi-Fi link is providing a wireless access point that your laptop or mobile device connects to directly. This direct connection does not rely on any additional networking hardware. It doesn't need a router. All it needs is the Wi-Fi link and your laptop or mobile device. This is the recommended mode for single gauge operation. Uh, in router mode, the Wi-Fi link is configured to search for a specific wireless access point, a router, and to automatically connect with it. Once a connection between the router and the Wi-Fi link is established, you must also connect your laptop or mobile device to the same router in order to use the Wi-Fi compatible software. In router mode, typically the user would bring their own router into the building to use the feature. However, an existing building router can be used if you know the network name or SSID and its password. Configuring the, the Wi-Fi link to router mode is done through the Wi-Fi compatible software. Router mode will allow you to extend the effective Wi-Fi communication distance between your gauge and your laptop or mobile device. Because both the Wi-Fi link and your laptop or mobile device are communicating directly with the router, the router can be placed in a building to allow for greater separation between the devices. Router mode also allows wireless connection for multiple DG700 gauges at the same time. Multiple Wi-Fi links can be configured to connect with the same router. This allows you to access multiple gauges from Wi-Fi compatible software that supports this feature. Uh, again, the Wi-Fi link ships in the AP direct connect mode, but if for some reason you ended up in router mode, um, you would power the Wi-Fi link and the DG700 gauge on. You would find the button A on the Wi-Fi link, press and hold for five seconds. All four lights are gonna begin to flash. When you release button A, the Wi-Fi link will restart in AP direct connect mode along with the default password security key of TEC Wi-Fi 12. It's also possible to reconfigure the Wi-Fi link to AP Direct Connect mode from the Wi-Fi compatible software. The Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi link kit consists of the Wi-Fi link and a power jumper cable. Uh, the Wi-Fi uh, link has four numbered LED indicator lights. Light number one is blue. That indicates power. If power is provided the Wi-Fi link, this light will be on solid. Light number two is green. This indicates a network is available. The device is ready for a connection. Light number three is also green. That indicates a connection. When a software app is connected, the light will be on. Light number four, it's 
amber indicates activity. This light should rapidly f flash very steadily except during auto zeroing of the, of the pressure gauge. Uh, when using a set of six new high quality AA alkaline batteries, the DG700 gauge by itself will operate for approximately 100 hours. A Wi-Fi link draws considerably more battery power than a DG700 by itself, and a set of new alkaline batteries powering both the DG and the Wi-Fi link will provide approximately 19 to 28 hours of wireless operation. So you want to make sure that you disconnect the Wi-Fi link from your DG700 when it's not in use. Just pull the, um, the jumper cable. You can always do a power check to see the state of your battery charge. Whenever you press the on-off key and start your DG700, it'll go through a start sequence where the, the entire display will flash and then you'll get a, a numeric reading on the right-hand B side of the DG7. It'll display that for about a second. It happens quick, but that is uh, the voltage of the, of the gauge. That's the, the remaining voltage on your batteries. You want to make sure that this reading is at least 7 volts. Uh, getting started, you want to connect the TEC Wi-Fi link and the DG700 together. You want to tighten the two attachment screws on the TEC Wi-Fi link. You want to attach the power jumper cable between the Wi-Fi link and the DG700. The number one blue light will turn on indicating that the Wi-Fi link is receiving power from the DG700. Once the on-off button on the DG700 is pressed, light number two on the Wi-Fi link will begin to blink. Light number two will then turn, on, turn solid indicating that it's providing a wireless network access point. Whenever light two is on, the keypad for the DG700 will no longer be functional. It indicates that the gauge is ready to be controlled remotely by Wi-Fi compatible software. It'll actually beep at you. The DG700 will beep if it's, if it's connected. Um, and the display, uh, the gauge display will remain on unless the Wi-Fi compatible software being used issues a command to dash the display. If you're using Tektite software, the display will dash. If you're using the Apple software, the display will remain on. If your laptop or mobile device uh, is currently connected to another wireless network, you need to disconnect from that network before connecting to the Wi-Fi link. The DG700 gauge needs to be on in order for the Wi-Fi link network to be visible from your laptop or mobile device. Let's look at the Apple software. First thing you want to do is open your settings screen on your uh, either iPhone or iPad. You're going to want to turn on the Wi-Fi, and then you're going to choose the DG700 as your wireless network. First time you connect, you connect, you're going to be asked to enter a password or a security key. That will always be TEC Wi-Fi 12. Then you're going to open iTech 700 app and click on the connect button at the bottom left side of the main app screen. The app will search for a DG700 gauge using the wireless network that the mobile device is currently connected to. The app will automatically connect with the gauge. Once the app and the gauge are connected, the gauge serial number and the battery voltage will display at the bottom of the screen and the app will begin displaying readings from the gauge. Once the communication link has been established between the iTech 700 app and the gauge, the second green light, number three, on the TEC Wi-Fi link will turn on. The flashing amber light number four indicates data transfer between the app and the gauge. The DG700 display will remain visible even though the iTech 700 is controlling the gauge. The, uh, the screen for the iTech 700 software, channel A, it'll show a building pressure with reference to the outside. If you were using the baseline feature, that'll show up. Channel B, you can have that in either a flow mode or a pressure pressure mode. It'll show if you have it in a flow reading, it'll display the channel B uh, flow depending on the model uh, fan that you're using and the ring configuration. You'll, you also have a, um, a cruise control button and you can select the cruise speed. You've got a quick stop, uh, stop fan device or a button and you have a manual fan speed slider. It's also a, a disconnect button. It disconnects the um, the software from the gauge. The um, PC software that we've got is Tektite 4.0 Wi-Fi. We'll run through that. First thing you're gonna wanna do is connect to your PC device. On your laptop uh, computer, 
you're going to select and connect TEC Wi-Fi Link Wireless Network. The network will be named DG700 and then followed by the serial number of the DG700. The first time you connect to this network, you'll be asked for a password security key. It's always going to be TEC Wi-Fi 12. Let's run through a, a tech type test, show you how it works. First thing you're going to want to do is open up your, uh, your network settings and you're going to connect to the DG700 with its serial number. Connect to that. Then you're going to go over and open up Tektite software. First thing you're going to want to do on the Tektite software is go into Options in the upper left-hand corner, select COM port. You're going to want to make sure that Auto Select is clicked and then you'll scan for ports and devices. It'll automatically detect the DG700 as long as it's powered up. And there it is. And you'll say OK to that and OK to that. Then you're going to start a test. So you go File, New Test. We'll do a ResNet one point test. We'll use the Duck Blaster B, say OK to that. And you got the customer information. We'll put in the building volume if we're doing a, 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 um, a blower door test for code compliance. We can put in the floor area. We can put the surface area of envelope. Um, some of the test standards allow uh, that to show up as a metric, CFM per square foot of surface area of envelope, put the building height, we can put building, a number of bedrooms, number of occupants. Next screen, uh, we've got, uh, if we want to use climate location under, with this software, it'll, you can uh, do some first year savings if you select these options, tell it where it's located, but we'll just move through this right now. Now we can do the ASHRAE 62210 calculations for a new house or an existing building where we need to measure the bathroom and kitchen fans. We'll just go through that next now. There's a comment screen. You can put some notes about the building. Uh, we're doing a ResNet one point test. And then when we get to the graphing screen, uh, the software scans for connected devices. Now the software is actually looking, searching the COM ports to see what device has been connected to it. Once it connects, we'll get a green light that says idle monitoring. That tells us that everything is good. You can start the test. This test standard needs us to input the indoor temperature, the outdoor temperature, and the altitude here in Minneapolis. We'll say okay to that. And we'll do our baseline readings. Now the ResNet one point test is gonna do five baseline readings on a 10 second average. It'll then subtract the lows from the highest and create a range. That range needs to be less than five pascals to do a one point test. If due to wind, our range is over that, then we'd need to do either a repeated single point test or a multi-point test. And these, this new ResNet test, this is a good test to do for the I codes. The I code, uh, the, I, the 2012 or 2009, 2012 IECC is silent on what test standard test to, and in lieu of that, uh, you, you can go with the ResNet test standard. Um, otherwise, you're stuck with, uh, on this software, you'd have to do the, the Canadian General Standard Board test that, um, that nobody has a copy of. So go with the ResNet test, learn these ResNet tests, and this software really helps walk you through them. And this software will also, at some point, print a, uh, a report. So we're good, our, our baseline range is all good. We can continue with a, a single point test. So we continue with the test. And we're gonna remove the, uh, all the rings. So we've got no rings. And right away we get some fan speed. In a second or two, we're gonna get some fan, uh, we'll get the fan pressure to where it can get a reading. Over on the right hand side of the screen, you can see fan pressure, building pressure. And uh, in the status bar, you've got the software automatically controlling the fan to bring the fan up to a minus 50 uh, Pascal uh, target pressure. And it'll slowly bring that up. And once it gets it to, there we go, we got 50. And then it'll start sampling these pressures. It'll sample data. And uh, once it gets through that, it'll move. It'll move to the next, we'll be able to get our results. And there we go. And we go to the next screen and see our test results. 2.5 ACH50, that passes the 2012 IECC with no deviations from the ResNet one point standard. 
go back and we can look at it, we can look at, we can look at the leakage area. Now you wanna save the test. So save your current test file. We'll call this the Jones house. And we'll save that where we save our blower door tests. And then you may wanna print the uh, to a PDF so you can email this to your code official or to your customer. So let's go to a detailed report and we'll do the Jones house. And this is the Energy Conservatory PDF Writer that installs automatically when you download Tektite 4.0 Wi-Fi. And we can go take a look at that report. And this is a detailed customer report. Gives you your CFM 50, your ACH 50. It'll give you your test results. You can zoom in on a little bit. It'll have the um, all of the screens where we save data, building information, if we put in uh, climate info, and heating costs. This will show the actual test, the baseline, whether or not there are any deviations from the ResNet test, and any notes that we might want to put in there. Very good. And we'll close that out, and that completes a Tektite test. Some troubleshooting. If you're working with the Wi-Fi module and you have some trouble, you can't, let's say you can't find the, the Wi-Fi link network on your laptop or mobile device, well, uh, maybe the power cable is not installed, or maybe the DG700 gauge is off, or maybe your laptop or mobile device is out of range of the TEC Wi-Fi link network. Um, it also could have ended up in router mode. You may have inadvertently set it to router mode. If it is set to router mode, you're going to want to get it back into AP Direct Connect mode by following the procedure that we discussed before. You're going to find the A button, press, you're going to power the gauge up, find the, the uh, A button, press and hold it for five seconds. You get all four lights flashing. When you release the A button, It'll start up automatically in AP Direct Connect mode, and if you have, you might have to enter the uh, the password in again. It's also possible to reconfigure that through the software if you're using a software package. That concludes our webinar today. I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to call us here at the Energy Conservatory at any time. Thanks again.